Welcome to Killing Time, the show where we uh, entertainingly review entertainment and occasionally just talk about whatever we want. I'm Ayaz. Rob. All right. So last time we met, you promised us you'd watch Salt. But I did say this. I would come up with the movie plot just based on the trailers. Not just the plot. I'm going to go through the entire movie. I wrote it down because I wanted to make sure I got this right. All right. All right. So, go for it. This is, Salt, by the way, is a, is a movie with Angelina Jolie. And uh, we might even throw the trailer in if I'm, if I'm feeling up to it. A defector. He's Russian. Neural scan is up. Yep. What's your name? My name is Vasily Orlov. Nothing. He doesn't exist. Today, a Russian agent will travel to New York City to kill the president. This agent is KA-12. The KA program is a myth. Scan says he's truthful. This guy's selling smoke. Wrap it up, Ev. Don't you want to know the name? You're good. You can tell the rest of your story to one of my colleagues. The name of the agent is Evelyn Salt. My name is Evelyn Salt. Then you are a Russian spy. Where'd she go? What are you doing there? What are you doing? This doesn't look good. I'm not a Russian spy. On the drill! I'm innocent! Somebody is setting me up! Shut up! Maybe Salt is who she says she is. Maybe it's your department. Mine is catching her so we can find out. plot to kill a president is, is revealed, and a guy fingers Joe Lee as a Russian spy who is the assassin. What happens in the movie? Now, Joe Lee is wrongly accused and is on the run. Her actions make it look like she is the assassin to the various other law agencies that are trying to catch her. Joe Lee also dyes her hair at some point. Her partner, Lee Schreiber, can't believe she's quite evil, and I bet he lets her go at some point. Maybe even let, like helps her out you know, with, with like, you know, a little bit of tip-off on what's going on. All the while, she's trying to figure out who set her up. Alternatively, she's a double agent. The movie ends with Joe Lee stopping the real assassin and being cleared. Uh, before you say anything, I haven't seen the movie. We're going to spoil it like crazy right now. How, how did I do? Normally, you would have done good. The reason I liked the movie was it wasn't as predictable as that. Are you kidding? She actually was the assassin. Get out she of here. She was planted in the United States government. Um, and through the course of the movie, this is a huge spoiler, um, one of the other Russian assassins kills her American husband, who was kind of her cover, but who she fell in love with, and that pissed her off. So she not didn't go like, I'm going to go for America, I'm going to go for Russia, I'm going to go for myself. Oh, she went, and she just killed everybody. Oh, okay, that's, that's way better then. Okay. And I thought, and then she, technically she killed more of the Russians and really tried to stop the plot. Um, it wasn't as predictable as that, which is why I kind of enjoyed it, and it ended, they could completely make another one because um, what I also found interesting was it was a, a long-term plot from the Cold War where they planted a lot of Russian agents. Liv Schreiber ended up being one. Look at that. So actually, it's, it, that sounds way better. now. Even it, it's actually a really good movie because it doesn't follow like the general plot line you think it's going to. Yeah, like basically, you what I just gave you was a plot from 24, right? Yeah. That's basically what happens in every season. Yeah. And uh, that's actually every plot involving Jack Bauer. So mm -hmm. that's what I thought when I saw the trailers. I didn't think it would be that good. And yeah, now that you said this, even though it's been spoiled, so to speak, it seems way more interesting now. Yeah, it, it definitely, it's interesting in that it doesn't follow the way you think it's going to. I mean, you start watching it, you're like, oh, she can't be an actual assassin. She can't be a Russian. She was. So it's kind of bleak? It kind of bleak. Um, she uh, gets away at the end so they could make, it was supposed to be a trilogy. Um, I don't know if it'll end up being. I know it made a lot of money, so um, it might. I thought it was an interesting story. It was well written, pretty good acted. You know, Angelina Jolie's pretty good, and Liv Schreiber's pretty good. Did you, did, you, would, did you have a hard time seeing Tomb Raider hanging out with Sabretooth? No, no, I was okay with it because, you know, they were both uh, 
different enough from those characters. You know, she didn't have the uh, the padded brow on, and um, he uh, he didn't have you know the excess hair and the nails. He didn't so. do the cat jump thing. No, no, he it's didn't. Ridiculously he didn't. stupid in Wolverine. No, that's too damn. Okay, so let's move on to something else. Now, a while ago, we were talking about TV shows on USA, and you suggested I watch White Collar because yes. the lead guy is really suave. And I said this a while ago. I'll say it again. He looks suave in the still photo that I used to see. That yes. show, it's, it's, the, it's the DVD cover. Now, it's a really good show. It's a very good show. I'm surprised. It's a bit, it's a bit light at times. It's a bit light. It's a bit funny, you know, but... Uh... He is just as suave as you thought he was from the picture. Yeah, White Collar is a, is a story about an FBI... It's an odd couple story, okay? There's an FBI agent, and he's working with a, a criminal on a, basically a work release program. It's the White Collar Division of the FBI. So they're usually dealing with art thieves, and uh, it usually gets very violent, though. Even though you think it's just White Collar and embezzlement, and you think it'd just be a bunch of guys in suits, it's got a lot of action. But it does suffer a bit of... Uh, some of that Hollywood OS keeps coming in. This has been a pet peeve of mine forever. Every time somebody goes to a computer, at the, C, at the FBI, there's chips and chirps and quirks and little animations, which you know the FBI would not bother to have, especially yeah. because they, don't, they probably don't have the latest computers. It's also a waste of processing power. Yeah, like, that, like that's going to happen. What was the other thing? Oh, yeah, that's right. Somebody like downloaded somebody's secret files in less than 10 seconds. It was the entire contents of a hard drive. Now, unless this person's laptop has USB 3.0, or eSATA, or something like that. I don't even think that's possible. Unless this hard drive was like 16 megabytes. Yeah, unless it was like a really old computer. Yeah, I was just like, oh, no. The technological failures are, are high, but it's, it's a fun show. It's like one of those, um, it's like a popcorn movie. But it's yeah. So yep. I suggest it. What, what do you like about the show? Uh, I like the, uh, the odd couple characters. I like the um, suave main character and the FBI guy. They play their parts very well, and they play off each other really well. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of good chemistry there. Still. There's uh, a lot of good chemistry. You've watched Royal Pains. I've watched yes. Royal Pains. Do you think that the, that's a show about a doctor who's basically misplaced in, in, in he's a concierge doctor now, which that means he's, a, he's an on-call doctor for rich people? Yeah, that? yeah. Well, he had an on-screen love interest that was named Jill. She used to work at the hospital. Did mm -hmm. you think they had any chemistry? No. Okay, neither did I. I thought not, not at all. It, it just never worked. And then there's a new love interest this season. Who and does have chemistry. They with. do have chemistry. And they, yes. they interact really well. But the original love interest no. is just it was, so stilted. It was awkward. Very odd. Okay, yeah. so I saw a movie called Blackout. Good? Horrible. Okay. Horrible. Here's why. Okay, it's a movie where three people get stuck in an elevator. So I'm thinking, okay, this could be interesting because you've got this human psychology kind of thing. How long before you go crazy? And, you know, you're, you're thinking, okay... Uh, how long is this going to be, right? Like, how, I mean, are they going to be stuck there forever? Are they going to try to get out? Okay, one of the, person, one of the people in there is already a psycho killer. They already tell you that in the plot description. Um, really, really lame and predictable. Just very disappointing. Uh, I, at the end of it, I was just like, okay, well, yeah, okay, he's a psycho killer. He's a doctor. He cuts up women and rub this is this is gonna be disturbing for our younger audience. Please turn away right now. He cuts up women and then he um, rubs salt all over his body and then does things to them with his body. Which is quite disturbing, quite a good idea for a horror movie, but you know what? It was this <laughs> Poor execution. Well the, the they okay, all the people stuck in the elevator and they show you flashbacks and little bits of their lives. They're not telling each other stories, it's just that it's the director telling us here's what they did. And, um, you know, two people are basically good. One is evil. Uh, there's a girl, a guy, and a psycho killer. Guess who gets out alive? The girl. There you go. Survivor girl. <laughs> Standard horror movie <laughs> procedure. It was very lame. Uh, I, oh, man, it was such a disappointment. I was, I was so annoyed that I wasted an hour and a half on it. Now, you said you watched a crappy movie. What was that? Yes. Charlie St. Cloud. Went to the movie theater to see this. What, what is that? Girlfriend took me to the movie theater to see this. And I was like, okay, I'll go. You pay, whatever. It's a movie but with Zac Efron. Um, he and his brother get in a car accident. His brother dies. He lives. And he then starts being able to see dead people. Most of all, his brother, who is like a ghost who hasn't moved on. And he goes and 
plays baseball with his brother every day at 5 p.m., and doesn't move on with his life for five years. Wait, so the ghost can play baseball? Yes. So he can affect change in reality? Apparently, or at least from Charlie St. Cloud's point of view, he could. Okay? Work with me here. Through the, I'll just ruin the plot here. I think you already did. Yeah, in the plot, no, this is all in the preview, what I've said so far. Within the plot, it eventually comes to the point where a uh, local girl who wants to um, do the race where they sail around the world, she goes out um, sailing and um, doesn't come back. But he sees her come back as a ghost because she's off somewhere half dead. And he then, once he realizes it's the ghost and not actually her, after he has a nice whole date and sleeps with the ghost, he goes out and finds her and his brother moves on and everything. But let me tell you, the movie's an hour and a half, and at least an hour of it is Zac Efron just looking off into the distance looking depressed. Like this. Well, that's how that's it felt it. while you were describing the movie. I mean, this, exactly. this, sounds, it's this sounds terrible. It is absolutely awful. I don't know if it was... It was based on a book, and it sounds like some of that touchy-feely book crap that, like, Nicholas Sparks or somebody would write, but it was horrible. So this is called what again? Charlie St. Cloud. Stay Charlie away. Charlie St. Cloud. Stay away from that and black Go out. see Salt. Well, yeah, Salt seems like it's a winner of, the, of all the stuff we talked about. Or sit at home and watch White Collar. Yeah. Uh, anything else? I think I got I got nothing else. I know I saw another horrible movie. I just can't remember what it was. So that's kind of lame. Um, oh, Royal Pains this week had Angela Gothals star of Behind the Mask, Leslie Vernon. Yes, I was it like, did. Hey, I know her. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> it took me a minute to realize where I knew her from. I'm like, I know that girl. Oh. It was really cool to see her in, in something else. Uh, yeah. If you guys don't know, Behind the Mask, Rise of Leslie Vernon is one of our favorite horror movies. Yeah. Uh, it's a mockumentary spoof. That becomes a horror movie. That becomes a horror movie, <laughs> and it just, it defines the conventions and then defies the conventions, which is yeah. so much fun. Mm -hmm. If you enjoy that kind of, uh, if you, it's, a, it's a comedy, okay? It's flat out a horror comedy at the mm -hmm. beginning. At the end, but, it's a horror movie. Yeah, but so, very smartly done. Yeah, so watch it. Or watch our three-part interview with the directors and cast on, on KillingTime.tv. Oh, that was a good time. It was a good time. Definitely watch that. We, we really, I mean, you want to talk about chewing the fat. <laughs> we chew the fat. We, we did that. It basically was a barbecue. It was a, a, a Skype barbecue. They were having yes. beers. We were sitting at chairs. It was awesome. All right, I think that's going to wrap up this episode. What do you think? I think so. Okay, so go out there. And watch some stuff that doesn't suck. All right? Now you know what doesn't suck. And stay away from the stuff that does suck. Unless it gets you laid. That's a good point. There's a tagline right there. <laughs> That's a catch you <laughs> <laughs>